Shane O'Connor, BBC, Coventry and Warwickshire. Seven minutes past seven, good morning. A South Warwickshire resident has found himself at loggerheads with his local council over the way he's protesting against plans for a massive housing development at Long Marston. I erected a, a very uh, simple, uh, simply worded sign protesting against the uh, proposed development at Long Marston Airport. So it is simply a sign, a similar sign to a house for sale sign. It is, around that size. That's uh, Jeremy Mansfield. Uh, who's uh, on Easter Monday put up this yellow protest sign, which just it just it just got letters on it. It just says no to the airfield development at Long Marsden. No picture, just the words. He's put it up in his small front garden as his home at uh, nearby Welford, and uh, in doing so, now he's fallen foul of officials from Stratford District Council. Within a matter of days, I received a call from Stratford District Council. Um, asking me to remove the sign, um, I declined, saying that I would wanted to see precisely in writing the reasons why, as I consider it to be a reasonable statement um, uh, to protest against um, that proposed development. However, he says the council have told him that they think that this sign now amounts to advertising. They indicate I was in contravention of some advertising act, uh, which I'd never heard of. I asked them to explain exactly what I was advertising. They weren't able to do so, um, and I asked them to confirm it. Uh, in 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 writing. Not sure whether they've done that so far, but uh, we're going to talk to him later on and find out what the latest is. As I say, uh, Stratford District Council refusing to join us on the show to talk about it this morning. They're saying that they uh, they feel that they can't, although there is no law preventing them from joining us on the program. Uh, let's talk to Jack Hart though, who's from the uh, the Freedom Association, and joins us this morning. Morning, Jack. Good morning. Thanks for being with us. Well, what do you make of all of this then? What? Is this uh, is it advertising first of all? Well, no, of course it's not advertising. It, this is disgraceful. So everyone's got a right to protest, and this gentleman is simply protesting something in his own private property that's going to affect his property itself. Although, the, I mean, obviously there's the question then, where do, where do you draw the line? I mean, I know this one is, isn't particularly large, but, you know, can you put a, a, a huge sheet across the front of your house with, with words all over it? I mean, how far can you go on your own land? Well, I think if it's your own land, my personal view would be it's your own land, you can behave and do what you want. If you want to put a big sheet up over the front of things to protest something, it's your own land, you're more than entitled to do so. What do you think's going on here, then? What, what, what are we talking about? I think this is yet another example of sort of local councillors re- or local council officers being sort of slightly overzealous when looking at regulations. I've had a look this morning at the regulations that they're referring to. There's a 32-page guidance document. Not once does it refer to protests. So it really is then being slightly overzealous. And this is, presumably, the 32-page document just talks about advertising, does it? It does. It just talks about advertising. It even says things like... Um, Political protests, like political banners during elections, are absolutely fine. So I really can't see how, if that's fine, this little protest sign isn't fine. OK, so what can he do then? I mean, has he, has he just got to suck it up and do what Stratford District Council tell him, or can he take this any further? I think he can definitely look at taking this further. I think it's worth, you know, standing his ground with the council and, you know, seeing how far they want to take this. Because if they're not willing to provide him in writing, really, with exactly what he's breached... I would, I would carry on doing the same thing. You know, he's got a right to protest, it's his private property, and he's not advertising anything. Although, I mean, the council presumably will have a legal department behind them. He's one man, one individual, on his own. There is, there is a limit, isn't there, I suppose, to how much exposure to risk people want to want to put themselves in? No, I entirely agree. I think you have to make a sensible decision about what action the council says it's going to take. But really, in this sort of situation, if everyone else around him starts doing the same thing, the council's not going to try and take an entire street to court. If if uh, he does want to protest about this, I mean, obviously he'll protest and, and, and complain to the council in the first instance. But where do you where do you go? I mean, is it worth him talking to somebody like Eric Pickles, the community secretary, and saying, well, you know, a- a- how are councils allowed to operate on this? Do they do they have any accountability outside of their own uh, their own offices? I think Eric Pickles. One of the good things about him, he's shown he's very willing to take on council departments that are being overzealous. So it would definitely be worth you know writing a letter to Eric Pickles and explaining the ludicrous situation he's been put in so i really think that would be a worthwhile thing to do and what about you as an organization i mean are you uh, are you uh, sort of uh, predisposed to take up uh, his case on his behalf is this the kind of thing that you do do you campaign in that way or not yeah, we do campaign in that way we take on matters of individual freedom one of the, the freedom association has been around for 40 years fighting for indi- individual liberty and freedom of speech and mm. it's one of the prime examples of things that we're keen to make sure doesn't happen so we'd be more than happy to sort of help write letters on his behalf and well, 
campaign on that. We'll have a, he's joined us on the show in about now. We'll have a chat with him and I'll point him in your direction Fantastic. as well. As a final point with all of this, though, um, is this the, the thin end of the wedge? Are we starting to see, you know, uh, bigger organisations bullying the, the small man in this way? I think it, it's very common, especially with local councils. It becomes very overzealous and it's very much, you know, to the letter of their, their believed law. So I really think this is when individuals have to stand up for themselves, especially when it comes to their own private property and say, it's my land, I can choose what to do, what I want to do with it. All right, Jack, uh, good to talk to you. Thank you. We will uh, point Jeremy in your direction. Uh, a bit later on, we, we asked to talk to somebody from Stratford District Council. No one was available, uh, and they also said that they couldn't even send us a statement because the case is active. I've never heard anything like it in my entire life. Uh, there is absolutely nothing in law stopping them from joining us on the show. There's nothing in law stopping them from sending a statement. Um, that's their own, they're hiding behind their own rules, in a sense, with that one. Uh, we did try to talk to them, if you remember this, we tried to talk to them back in August of last year when they did a similar kind of thing in Dorsington, uh, where residents had protest signs up, and again, they were protesting against the council, in a way, because they were opposing a wedding venue, and they wouldn't come on and talk to us uh, about that either. So we're at Stratford District Council, not able, not willing, not wanting to join us on the show this morning.